One of the top reasons why developers take a long time to complete their work is because they get stuck and then they don't have a great way to get quick help. I personally remember desperately scrolling Stack Overflow in hopes of finding someone with the same problems as me. Nowadays, I use AI as a 24-7 pair programmer directly in my terminal. Now, this means that I've reduced my hours spent in this frustration. And since I started to be able to code this way, I ended up having way more time to spend on becoming a top engineer as I have more energy to learn new concepts and help out others in my team to become better themselves. I'm Zen, and in this video, I'll show you how to set up Aider and turn on your AI pair programmer. Let's dive right into it. If we have a look on Aider's website, you can see that Aider is a Python-based terminal application. So considering that I've already got Python on my machine, I'm going to copy this pip install command and run it in my terminal. I recommend you to then open a folder where you've already got some interesting code to test Aider on. In my case, if I run ls, you can see that I've already got some Python files here. Instead of explaining what these Python files do, how about we just ask Aider to put it to the test? I'm going to launch Aider by just typing Aider without any other parameters. And by the way, I already have the environment variable set up so that it can connect to my AI model. Once Aider has launched, we can add files to its context by typing slash add, and I'm going to use a star to add every file in my repository because my repository is quite small, so it's fine. Once all of these files are added, I'm just going to ask a very general question. What is the goal of this repository? And then with all of that context, Aider is going to answer that question. It simply says, the goal of this repository is to create an AI assistant that can answer questions based on personal diary entries. And that's indeed correct. But this is just a very general question. Let's get into the code, right? On the left here, I'm gonna open the file askgpt. And one of the first methods I see does not have a doc string. Generate OpenAI embeddings. Let's say that you're new to the AI world. You might not even know what an embedding is. So let's go and ask Ader what this method does and what an embedding even is in the first place. I can actually start typing generate and you will see that this method name appears in my terminal that I can just autocomplete with a tab. So Ader intelligently parses your code files as well so you can easily ask questions about specific methods. So I can ask it what does this method achieve and what even is an embedding? When it answered this question, it actually immediately generates a doc string. That's the way that I like to set up Aider so that it proactively helps me out. But you can, of course, configure it to just give text explanations as well. Here you can see that it adds the explanation as a doc string. This method generates embeddings for the given input text using OpenAI's API. And then it says that an embedding is a numerical representation of text that captures its semantic meaning, allowing for comparison and similarity measurements between different pieces of text. And that's entirely correct. It's a really great description. On the left here, you can see that indeed that doc string was already added. And in fact, in this case, an automatic commit is created where Ader already creates a commit with a commit message that I can push straight to my repository. And to show you that you can use Aider for non-trivial coding tasks, let's go ahead and add a new feature to our code. Specifically, uh, any user can call my methods now and their user input might be super large, which would incur a lot of AI costs. So let's make sure that the um, application actually exits out if the user input is too large. Let's go ahead and type out that wish. So I want the application to exit out if the user input within ask GPT is, let's say, larger than mm, 100 words. In this case, it's also going to, again, proactively include some code to actually achieve this. So in askgpt.py, you can see that if the question exceeds 100 words, which it does by just splitting the question with standard spaces, it will print that out and it will exit out the script. 
Now I can actually modify this code to match the specific behavior that I want, but I think this is already an interesting approach. So we can go ahead and also ask it to test this script, right? Here you can see that it's trying to make me call the script with just a short question, but I want to test it with a large question and make sure that it returns an error. So let's actually ask it to do that. Let's test the ask GPT script together. Specifically, I want to test that a large user input does indeed make the script exit out without an answer. And now what it actually does is it creates a new test file. So it can even do that. It can create new files for you. It creates a file test ask GPT where it will indeed in a sub process run the ask GPT script and then it will assert that the return code is one. Of course, I can also write unit tests for those specific methods, but I do like just having this kind of end to end test and just calling the actual script. So let's go ahead and accept creating a new file and then run that shell command as well. So you can see it's super proactive. It can even run those shell commands if you approve it. Now, if you check out the assertion error here, you can see that it actually failed to run the test successfully. It says here, the expected error message was not found in the standard error. So this is where the pair programming part comes in. This AI model is not going to create faultless code. So let's actually have a look at this test ask GPT file to see if we can find the problem here. It does create a string with a bunch of words to try and trigger that error code. But I think that this assertion where it checks whether or not the error message is passed, that's not going to fly because I think that the code right now simply returns an error code one and it doesn't properly return an error message like this. We can have a look and ask GPT to see if that's the case. So in here, let's try to find the code that it added. You can see here that it checks if the question exceeds hundred words, but it just doesn't exit with exit code one. It doesn't actually pass a message in. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that assertion. And then we can go ahead and run test ask GPT one more time. You can actually use slash run to specifically run a command. So let's do Python test ask GPT py. And now you can see that the test has passed successfully. So this is a great example of actually pair programming with AI. It's not faultless, but it definitely saved me some time in terms of creating this test. And of course, as I said before, you might want to prefer actually writing unit tests instead of this kind of end to end test actually calling the script. But of course, you can just go ahead and query the AI model differently or edit the test yourself. Now, you cannot just use it only for coding. You can also ask it for things like architectural improvements of your code. Let's actually do that. If we type slash architect, we can ask architectural questions. So I can, for example, say review my code and give me two top recommendations for making it more scalable. Let's see what it comes up with now. So first of all, it's actually proposing to do asynchronous processing for API calls, which could be a good catch. I don't really have any async methods. Depending on how users are going to query this method, that can definitely help. And then it also proposes how we can potentially use async methods in here. And the second proposal is to do batch processing for diary entries, which I think is specifically done when the diary entries are first being pushed into the Cosmos DB. And indeed, I did not really batch them in any way, shape or form. So these are some interesting proposals you can already try out in your code. And so you can even use Ader to just review your code and get some peer reviews that way, right? Which is very nice. So I hope this gave you a great idea of how you can use Ader as your 24 seven AI coding companion, not to automate your code work, but to have a buddy that you can always ask questions to and get more context around your problem so you can solve it faster instead of being stuck in Stack Overflow for your entire working day. 
If you appreciated the tips in this video, I would love to hear how you will use Adrian in the future in the comments down below. And of course, if you subscribe, you will receive way more videos like this where I explore actual useful AI tools that you can use in your daily workflow. Thanks and see you next time.